A very warm welcome again, guys. Hello, welcome to, to Journal Entries. I am Kasim. I hope uh, you're having a good start to the new year. I hope life is treating you well. I hope you're healthy. I hope all is going well. So um, I've made quite a number of notes uh, this week that I've been thinking about, things that I've been reflecting on um, that I wanted to share with you. Maybe they might trigger something for you to think about in your own life um but really as you guys know by now if you've watched this series of journal entries essentially i believe that look the reality of life is that the majority of us are not going to be super wealthy to the degree that we've got billions and billions of pounds to give to our children most of us are not going to reach the highest echelons of life to become CEOs, to become politicians um, and individuals who are maybe perhaps very famous pop stars or influencers, right? Uh, so that we can leverage our fame or our influence to help our children or the next generation move up. The, but all of us have gone through a lot. All of us have stories, all of us have life lessons, we have principles, we have um, uh, rules that we've, we've, we've uh, abided by, we have a code of ethics, we have things that we have learned in our lives that we can pass on to our children that I actually think is more important um, than necessarily just giving your children whatever it is that they, you, you feel that they need. There's this, I read this quote which one said, it's not what you leave to your children, it's what you leave in them, right? And I I completely agree with that. Um, I think so many of us focus on leaving material things for our children, but the reality of life is, I read uh, something that said that the average wealth only lasts three generations. So the reality of life is that the majority of us even if we leave wealth, even if we leave buildings, within three or four generations, most of it is going to be gone anyway. But what always remains is what we've left in people's heart, how we made people feel, right? And so that's really why I share with you guys to journal. I share with you to journal and start your own journaling, your, jour your own journals, so that one day you can give your journals to your children. And it can be all of the principles of, that you've learned, all of the lessons that you've learned, all the things you know work and don't work for you so that they can have this massive head start in their lives so that they don't have to figure everything out themselves. So that's why I want to share with you some of the things that I've been thinking about. Hopefully it inspires you. Hopefully it makes you think. Hopefully it makes you take action in your own life. Okay, so let's go through what I've been reflecting on and thinking about over the last week. So one of the first things that I have here is that everyone wants to take credit for their part in your success, but not the responsibility for your scars. Um, I do think that's true. Um, I think all of us have people in our lives who use us. It's funny, actually, I work in a school and one of the things that I'm constantly telling students is that you have to be very careful that you're not being used because for example, I have a student in my school who is like very abrasive. She is very confident. She is um, very confrontational. And I said to her that ev almost every single time I find that there is an incident involving another student, she is either been involved in it, she's there, She's been, um, someone brings her along to come and, and back them up or someone tells her and then she feels a need to do something. And I was explaining to her the other day that you need to be really careful because you're being used and you don't even realise you're being used, right? And it's the same. A lot of people don't realise that in life, some of us, we can become successful. But let's ask ourselves, why are our parents pushing us in a certain direction? Why is it that they think that, we have to be a doctor in order to be successful. Yes, you can be successful as a doctor, but that doesn't mean that that's how you define success to be, right? I remember Dale, I think it was Dale Carnegie or um, Earl Nightingale, 
who said that success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. In other words, you can consider yourself to be successful if you decide you want something and then you start heading in that direction. You start going towards the the thing that you've intentionally decided that you want. And the key thing that he talked about was intention. Intention is a center of tr really all true happiness, right? There is that saying that says one of the worst things that can happen is to go and live a life and one day discover that the ladder that you built your life on or that you climbed up was the wrong ladder, right? Um, and it, it, it's, you know, I, I, I've said to people before, and it's something that I've said many times in my videos, we, I believe that we all have what I call the two colours. So we have the colour, which is the colour that we have to show the world. And then we have what is I call the our essence. So the colour that we have to show the world is can be like blue, which is essentially a colour where, look, the reality is if clearly you're going to be going to your work a Christmas do, you have to behave in a certain way, right? If you are around, if you're going to meet your girlfriend or your boyfriend's parents for the first time, you kind of need to behave in a certain way, right? Now, some people may say, well, why should I be fake? Why should I pretend to be something I know I'm not? Well, life is this kind of dance between these two colors, between being authentic to who you are, but also going along in the world. Because I remember listening to Jordan Peterson and Jordan Peterson said something that I'll never forget. He said that as a parent, your primary role is to ensure that your child is liked by other people. Because, and, and in fact, I actually talked about this in my last book that I wrote, because the reality of life is none of us live in the world by ourselves, right? We live in the world with other people. We don't just, you know, it, some of us obviously live in the middle of nowhere. But the reality is for the majority of us, we live in societies where there is loads of people. And I say this to students all the time. Most of the things that you're going to want in your you're going to want in your life, somebody already has it. And your job is to essentially encourage either encourage them or exchange something or persuade somebody to give it to you now usually of course in life you have to exchange it for something right so the first color is is the color that we have to show the world the second color that we have as people is the color that we we are right and that color can be i don't know orange now, the problem is a lot of us, we lose who we are at the core whilst trying to fit into the world. And so that's where there is this balancing act that you have to go through in life, right? Where you're trying to, in one sense, be who you authentically are as much as you can, but at the same time, you want to be able to move forward right? So there are times when you need to shut up and say nothing, but there, there are times when you do need to start to stand up for your convictions and to stand up for what you believe and stand up for what you know is the truth, right? Um, but the question is, when do we do that? And that's what one of my last books I was talking about, because most of us struggle with this balance of when should I stop and when should I go? When should I go hard and when should I go slow? When should I be who I am and when should I pretend to be something else? Um, to what um, a quantity or intensity should I be myself or other people? Should I tell the truth and the total truth or should I kind of sometimes tell a white lie? It's this kind of dance that we constantly have to go through. And I say, as I say, I've been thinking about this because I just feel like so many of us go through life not realising that People can be, we, people can use us, right? I'm sure you've heard of people say all the time that be oh, good people, good people finish last in the race or something like this, or good people finish last. Well, the reason for that is because somebody who believes only in good doesn't take account for the bad. And the reality of life is that there is bad in the world. There are people who, if they, 
you know, who if they can cheat and lie and manipulate, they will. I was explaining to um, a student the other day and I said, look, one of the most, uh, we were talking about how, which lessons they wanted to do because they were struggling to go to a lot of lessons and we were choosing, okay, let's reduce your timetable so that you go to more lessons. And we were deciding which lesson uh, this student should go, to, should, should go to. And one of the things that I said was, she said to me that she didn't want to go to maths. And I said, that is one subject you have to go to because it is a principle, it is a key, it is a cornerstone of just living a successful life because the reality of life is if you don't know how to count or you're not very good at maths or you don't understand how to do quick maths or you're not proficient, 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 you're not you're not confident in doing maths very quickly, what can happen is you can go to a shop, buy something, and somebody can maybe pay you £10 less, and you won't even realise that it's happened. Now, that, of course, may not seem significant, and it's just like, okay, fine, it's a tenner. The problem is, what if that happens all throughout your life, right? All of a sudden, you've lost a huge amount of money, and it's like, whoa, how did this happen? It happened because you didn't pay attention, because you were missing really important aspects of life. And one of the most important aspects of life is for us to look at who is influencing us, what are, these, what are people around us saying to us, what do people want, people around us want from us. I was saying to a student the other day, I said, Basically, she had gotten into a fight with another girl, with another female student. And I said to her, this wasn't the other day, this was yesterday. And I said to the student, I said to her, um, uh, so what happened? And she was explaining to me what happened. And one of the things that she was saying to me, she said, well, sir, they, my best friend and everyone has been telling me that she said stuff about me. And I said to her, why would they say that to you? You know? Why would these all of these people go out of their way to obtain certain information and then come and find you and tell you the information? My question is, what was their intention? What did they want to do? It just so happens that the girl who, of course, got into a fight has a massive temper. She's a little bit paranoid in that and very self-conscious. She doesn't like anyone talking about her. She doesn't like any rumours. She doesn't like anyone even mentioning her name. If you walk in the corridor and even look at her, she will usually kick off. And the other students, of course, know this. So if they're bored and they're looking for a little bit of excitement, she's a really easy target. And I was explaining this to her. And so I guess the thing that I ask you and I would ask you to think about in your own life is, are you being used? Yeah. Is, are there people in your own life who are using you for things that you don't even realize? Are you being influenced to go in a certain direction, but you don't even realize that you're being influenced to go in that certain direction? Why are people asking you to go out? Are they asking you to go out because you're genuinely their friend and they want to see you? Or are they asking you to go out because they have nobody else and you're the only person who is most likely to be able to buy them a drink? Or maybe they're even broke and have no money. It, it's like, I know this sounds terrible to say this, but this like if you look at the arc of somebody's life, it is very, very, very easy to live a life where you get, to the end of that life, and you're like, where is my, when, when will I get my thing? When will I win? When will I, when will it be my turn to have happiness, joy, laughter, fulfillment? When will that be for me? Um, and I just feel like that resentment usually leads to people being very vengeful, right? Um, or being very vindictive because they're like, the world is unjust, the world is unfair. But they haven't recognized and mastered the other elements of life which exist, which is darkness, malevolence, lying, cheating. All of these aspects of life exist in coexistence co with joy, happiness, fulfillment, truth, love. They both exist 
at the same time. I, was, I, I keep saying this to people all the time. When we're younger or when we haven't developed our consciousness and self-development and ourselves and our awareness of the world and, and, and just how the world functions and how people function, we tend to see the world in black and white, right? I'm either the victim and other people are perpetrators. But the reality of life is that's not really how life is. Life is more gray, right? It's it, there's a lot of nuance in life. It's a lot more complicated than what most of us make it out to be. Situations are a lot more complex. Um, and actually, even with other people, when we're judging other people or we're seeing other people, I think it's really important for us to look at ourselves and say, well, what's their story? What was their intention? What are they? What were they trying to to do. This is something that I've been thinking about for a long time and is is really quite a major problem in the world I've noticed, which is that people just don't have wisdom today. People don't, to, this is my perception of it anyway, and I could be wrong, I've been wrong many times, but today, like sometimes I'll watch a video and I'll read the comments on the video and clearly you can see that the video is a joke, but the way people take it so seriously and it's like, dude, come on, Put the context. The person is a comedian. The person is known for pushing boundaries. So why are you surprised that they're, that, that they're making such a joke? And if you don't like the joke, just click off it. It's not a big deal. And I just feel like today we're living in a world where a lot of people are just, I don't know, like they just don't have an understanding of how people work, why people do the things that they do, when they should just shut up, when they should just ignore things. Um, I think people make situations bigger than what they are. I could, I could be wrong, but I just feel like so many of us are being hindered in life because of just, we're just, we, we're not prioritizing the right things. I don't know, I could be wrong, but that's just my perception of what I've realized. Um, Comment below. What, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'm always interested to hear other people's perspectives. Look, I'm, I've always said to you guys, I'm not an expert at anything, okay? I'm not even an expert at myself, so I can't be an expert at anything. But what I can do is I can share with you what I believe to be the truth based on principles, keys, um, and lessons and perceptions and, um, and understanding of things that I have read. It doesn't mean it's the truth. You know, I've said to you guys on many occasions, and I said this in my first book, that there are two types of truths. There is a truth and then there is the truth. A truth is um, your perception of something, right? So meaning me and you can be at a music festival and it's raining and there's a Metallica's playing. You can be having a great time and I can be having a really crap time. The question is, which one of us is right? The answer is we're both right. It's just that we're seeing it from different angles. And then on the other side, there is the truth. The truth is un is incontrovertible. You can't argue with it, right? And the easy example I give people is gravity. Gravity is the truth. Meaning if you go on top of a building, irrelevant of whether you're a nice guy, you're a kid, you're in Africa, you're old, you're Muslim, you're Christian. If you go on top of a massive building, which is really high, and you jump off it, I can assure you, you're never going to fly. Okay? You're always going to go down. We all know that. It's incontrovertible. Now, usually when I say this kind of stuff, people try to get clever and they're like, well, what if, there were, what if I had wings? What if I had um, some sort of power, parachute or something? Well, now that's different. We're not talking about that because now you're changing the, uh, the, the game that we're playing or the, 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 the situation that we're talking about. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just write, comment below. I, I'd love to see what your thoughts are on that, on that, what I've been thinking about. But it's just something that I've, yeah, it's just something that I've been reflecting on a lot recently. The other thing that I've been thinking about is um, most people don't think about their intention. They think about what they want to do. And again, this kind of links into the first thing that I've, I, I kind of was thinking about. I think so many of us in life are so unconscious. We are just coasting through life. We're just doing, going through the motions, 
what do we some people call it the rat race we're just doing things over and over and over and over and over again and we've never really taken time to stop and reflect i said to a student yesterday she um had come into my office and she was a little bit stressed out and um there was a lot of things going on in her family and there was she said that there is a she says that she feels out of control and i said to her have you been journaling because I've said I say to most students who are going through a hard time journal write the things that you're going through down and um she said yes sir I've been doing that and I said okay so that's the first level the second level is to um actually look back and reflect on what you've wrote down meaning a lot of people like back in the days when I first started journaling I would just write things down and I'd never read it again but now I'm at a point in my life where not only do I write something down but I go back and reflect on it and think about it in fact me doing these journal entries with you guys is a way for me to reflect it is a way for me to look back on what I wrote down and and look at it. And what did I mean by that? Where was I? I why do I think like that? Which kind of leads to the next stage, which is breaking it, uh, analyzing it and breaking it apart, which is what I, I said to her. I said, if you really want to make, take back the control in your life and try to focus on the areas that you can control, you've got to start breaking the different aspects of your life down into pieces and then you've got to start analysing them. You've got to start asking questions like, how is this happening? Why is this happening? How can I stop it? How can I change it? How are other people dealing with the same situation? Is this new? Is this unique? Are there any principles? Are there any keys? Is there a book I could read on this? Is there anyone who can support me? Um, do you see what I'm saying? Like, you've actually got to be active about life. And what I said to her yesterday was, I won't say her name, so let's use, I don't know, Crown. Let's say her name was Crown. I said to Crown, I said, Crown, one of the things that I have learned in my life is that life seems to grow like become successful and you people seem to have momentum and we seem to move forward in life when we put more than 60 percent of the responsibility of an area in our control and what i have found is and this is ex this is example that i gave her what i have found is that most people put about 80% of how things they like the the responsibility of how things work out on other factors like their boss the NHS their parents and then they want to do 20% and the 20% that they are responsible for they won't they're not even mastering they're not even activating and operating in the 20% at like 100% they're actually doing it at about 40% um and so what I I have learned in my life and the example that I gave Crown yesterday is I said to her that look I remember one time I broke down in my car and when I broke down I stayed in my car and put on my hazard lights and people were driving past me and they were so angry and they were so frustrated and they were really pissed off because I just sat in my car and I had my um, hazard lights on and I remember uh, this I, I broke down again in the same car another time but this time what I did was I got out of my car and started pushing my car and something fascinated fascinating happened what happened was that people stopped their cars got out of their cars and started helping me to push my car and I reflected on this because I was like well that's weird why would people get out of their cars to help me when I'm trying to push my car? But before when I had broken down, nobody stopped to try and help me. And what I realized was that, and this is one of the keys that I've realized about life, is that if you start and you start moving and have momentum and you do your bit to the best of your ability, life activate something it activates i guess you could call it luck you could call it coincidence you could call it grace i don't know what word you want to use but something happens when you start taking responsibility for your life when you start moving forward with your own life when you start actually operating and doing the best that you can do
something happens. I don't know what it is, don't ask me because I don't know what it is, but I it is it, it, something around this luck thing. Um, and I've just realized that in life, a lot of us aren't putting in 100% on the areas that we can control, right? And part of that is because we're not focusing on those areas. We are, uh, we're not paying attention to those areas. We are, um, we, we don't even want to see the areas. You know, I say to people all the time that if you really want to improve something, you've actually got to look at it. I remember when I was in debt, one of the first things that helped me get out of debt is I started opening all the letters where I'd been sent letters from the bailiffs. Because then I actually knew how much am I in debt? You know, I, I, and if you don't believe that you are somebody who doesn't like to live in denial, let me ask you a question. Most of us have apps, uh, like banking apps. Have you set up your banking app to send you alerts every single time that you spend money? When you go to um, to buy something, do you put your card into the machine or do you just tap it? When you... Do you check your balance of how much money you have in your bank account regularly? I know that sounds, you're going to be like, well, Kasim, that's such an easy example and it doesn't really mean anything. I agree. It is a very simple example, but it tells you something. It doesn't tell you everything, but it tells you something, right? About the way in which you think about the world. Um, and so, yeah, you know, as I say, I'm just curious about your intention why are you going to work? Why do you are you in the job that you're in currently? Why do you go to the gym? Why are you in the relationship that you're in now? Like you've just actually got to like break this stuff down. You've got to actually analyze it. You've got to look at what do I actually have control of? What am I? Am I like uh, what was it? I was watching a video online the other day. Um, with a guy called Dorian Yates. Dorian Yates is like a bodybuilder. Um, I think he's like a six times or seven times, no, six times Mr. Olympia. And he was training a guy called Mike Thurston. And one of the things that he said was, Mike Thurston um, asked him, if somebody is not getting the gains that they want, then what, what do you think is wrong? What are they doing wrong? Like, why are they, if somebody's going to the gym and eating properly and, um, and they are going to the gym, why are they not getting gains? And he said, and I, I found this fascinating. He said, well, they can't be doing it. They can't be doing everything correctly because if they were doing everything correctly, they would be getting the gains that they're looking for. They would be making the progress that they're looking for, right? And I remember this is actually one of the biggest... Re this is what, now that I'm thinking about it, this is why I connected so much with what he said. Because I remember back when I first started on, like I was in debt, I was very suicidal, I was struggling in my life. One of the things that helped me was the day that I came to the realization that I could not have had all the answers because if 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 I had all the answers then I would have been successful right if I if my way of doing things was so right then I wouldn't have been in debt then I wouldn't have been um in a situation where I was unhappy and even thinking about taking my own life right I can't have figured everything out if I was in that situation does that make sense? It, it, I don't know if that kind of makes sense. And that's why I think I connected so much with that. Because it is true, sometimes in life, we have to look at ourselves and say, if you think you're so good looking, why is it that nobody wants you? Why is it that not of all the billions of people, no one wants to be in a relationship with you? If you say that you are, um, your book and your writing is so good, why is it that of all the billions of people on the planet, nobody wants to buy it? If you think that you're so good at singing and you're so talented, but nobody wants to take you on, you have to ask yourself, are you? Now, you may be great at singing, but what you're missing is the marketing. You're missing the um, the charisma, the personality, Right. And then that goes back to the bit where you have to actually go back to intention and you've got to analyze stuff and break things down. And I just feel like a lot of us don't break things down. A lot of us don't 
analyze stuff. A lot of us don't really examine our intentions, why we're doing stuff. How long have we been doing it? Is it working? Is it failing? Um, and I encourage you to do it. I encourage you to look at your life and examine it. I encourage you to look at your body and see is are you is this body that you've got currently really a representation of who you are and what you're the kind of body you're capable of having or is it really a representation of how lazy you are I don't know I'm not saying by the way that you are that I'm just saying that's just something for you to think about something for you to reflect on right um so I think I will stop the video here um and because of, of, of you know I've got so many points I could go on but I think you get the point of what I was thinking about and I was reflecting on this week um what have you been thinking about comment below you you know me I'm always keen to hear people's perspectives and what people think and what where people are in their own lives I, I'm always keen so send, send comment below send me a message I'm always keen um yeah, if there's a type of video you want me to create or there's a topic that you want me to talk about and give you my perspective on, send me a WhatsApp me, so not WhatsApp me, Instagram me, send me a message on here, comment on the on the video. I want to hear from you. Um, as always, guys, I'm very grateful for anyone who watches my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.